Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot him in the head. Hey guys, Hop here for TFB TV. We are at the NRA Annual Meeting 2023 at the Set Me Booth talking to Dave, the owner of Markelmar. And, uh, hey, you we said are it talking... right. Fantastic. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure. I was taking a crack at it, but we're taking a look at a, a new version of the Set Me L. That's correct. In 300 Blackout. Hoping you could walk us through the gun. Sure. Uh, about four years ago, we acquired 10,000 part sets for the Spanish Set Me. Uh, it's the last roller locking gun ever built for a military. It's the last design that Set Me ever created, and it's the only roller locking gun that was ever designed specifically for 556. However, as you know, and as the viewers know, there's a new caliber in town, and the 300 Blackout has gotten a huge following. But we didn't know of any roller locking alternatives in 300 Blackout. So we decided to re engineer the gun to allow 300 Blackout to be shot out of a traditional roller locking firearm. We can build you a short barrel rifle, which runs about 12 and a half inches, or the standard 16.25. Gotcha. I know the, the big difficulty when suppressing roller delayed guns is trying to get the locking angles correct. That's correct. If you guys try to suppress this, what, are, what kind of results do you guys get with supersonic versus subsonic what kind we, of tuning? That's a very, good, very astute point. What we have found is that we, it, the gun requires a new locking piece for efficient suppressor operation. So we actually sell a suppressor locking piece specifically made for running it with a suppressor on the end of the barrel. And the risk, if you run a lot of supersonic ammunition without the correct locking piece, could potentially cause issues like roller dent and stuff in the gun over time? You can cause roller dent, but what we've seen most often is actually starting to damage the buffer system and the stock itself, where it attaches. Gotcha. And have you guys had the chance to try any, like, you know, low uh, low back pressure suppressors or anything that maybe don't require as much tuning? I don't know if you guys want to necessarily recommend those to people, but is that an option, you think? Oh, there, there are options. We have tested several suppressors that didn't need the modified locking piece. What we would recommend is if a user decides they want to suppress the 300 Blackout, put their suppressor on, run it. If You'll know if it's over-boosted, and then if you see the need for that, pick up the, the locking piece that's specifically made for that. And for the people who want to be able to run it with and without a can, with supers and with subs, is there a configuration of locking piece that seems to work pretty well for all those contingencies, or is that asking a little too much from the whole spectrum of the ammunition? I'll be honest with you, if you know your roller locking, a lot of that depends upon the ammunition that you're shooting. So there is such a variation in commercial grade ammunition, even in 300 blackout, that it'd be hard for me to answer that question. I'm sure there is an optimal configuration with each type of ammunition, but that's beyond has so far been beyond our capability to test for. You guys do these in like a bunch of different uh, colors and stuff as well, right? Yes, we do the original Spanish green. This we had Cerakote. We only use Elite Cerakote. We had them formulate the color specifically to match the Spanish green. We also do them in black, traditional black, and then gray and flat dark earth. And these uh, the handguards also all color match to the uh, furnitures, or do you just have a couple colors of that? Well, the. We have either the green, flat, dark earth, or black furniture, but if you decide you want a green gun with black furniture, we can facilitate it. That's kind of one of your guys' things, right? Like you essentially make guns not so much maybe made to order, but you do relative like custom work? or We, provi we try to provide as much flexibility for the consumer to configure a, a, a weapon, that, or excuse me, a rifle that they really want. And so whatever look, I mean, it provided a, we've sold gray rifles with green handguards. It takes all sorts, I guess. And you guys essentially work directly with customers, right? So if people want to, to buy rifles from you, you just ship to their local FFL? We can ship to their FFL. If there are people who want to stock these guns for their uh, gun store, we also are distributed through MSR. Awesome. And do you guys have a price point and availability on the 300 Blackout versions? The barrels are actually in machining as we speak. The price will be exactly the same between Blackout and our 5.56 rifle. MSRP on the configuration you see there with the Picatinny rail is $1,350. Does that uh, include an alternate locking piece or is that something that they can get directly from you? That's after something the they can get directly from us. Okay. Awesome. And what's about the price point on the replacement locking wedges and stuff? They're $200 each. Thanks, Dave, for walking us through the rifle. No problem. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Stay tuned. We are still at the NRA 2023. We've got some more content coming for you. TFB TV and TFB Showtime. Thank you, guys. That was not the best outro I ever did, but... Hey, it sounded good to me. Yeah.